look at God's creation. Why would we do that? Because it is written. Go look at Romans chapter one, where it says God reveals his attributes, his divine nature, his power through what he has created. Mm -hmm. We can come to a greater understanding by seeing what he has created. Well, what was the first thing he created? He said, let there be light. And there was light. Spoke it into existence. As he does everything. God speaks it, it's in existence. But I started thinking about atomic power. Right? And it just came to me. I know very little about it, but I knew this. That there's a difference. You know, there's two kinds of nuclear action. Mm -hmm. there's, there's fission. Is that right? And there is fusion. Fission is what bombs are, uh, you know, atomic bombs are, are made out of. That's what was dropped on Hiroshima yes. and Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. They were fission bombs. And fission is where they split an atom and incredible power is released. But fusion is far, far, far more powerful. And fusion is when they collide atoms and they come together and become something new, right? They, they unite. Mm -hmm. And that just struck me because it's all about division and unity mm -hmm. to understand uh, when it comes to prayer and power, when it comes to anything spiritually in power. The word of God says clearly, let there be no division among you. Doesn't it? Yes. That's Absolutely. a command, not a suggestion, mm -hmm. not an encouragement. It is a command of God. So I was thinking, well, there's such power in our prayer when we come together. Right. That's fusion, right? But you could never do that were it not for the fission. fission. Yeah. And fusion bombs are typically set off. It takes a fission bomb to set off the nuclear bomb, the fusion, uh, fusion bomb, right? Mm -hmm. A hydrogen bomb. It takes that much power just to set off the fusion bomb. Well, the great fission event that starts the fusion was this is uh, it's hard to conceive of this. Mm. The foremost command is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And I believe, because it says it, that the Father and Jesus, the Holy Spirit, they are one. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. But for one split moment in time, just a split second in time, <clears throat> there was fission. When Jesus Christ, who never sinned, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, <coughs> became sin for our sake. And it was sin that was nailed to the cross. And Christ cried out in anguish, my God, my God, why hast thou have forsaken me? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. For that one split second in time, Jesus was separated from the Father. That was the fission. But that was the fission that set off the fusion. And we were made one with the Father. Right? Yeah. That's the power of God. There is such disunity in the body of Christ. Such incredible, in spite of the command of God, there is such <laughs> disunity in the body of Christ. And we wonder why our prayers lack power. God wants us to have that atomic power in our prayers. But it takes, first of all, you're, you have no prayer life if you are not united with Jesus Christ. Because ultimately our prayers have to go to the Father. That's what he taught in that in the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. When you pray, pray this way, our Father. But you can't have him as a Father unless you have gone to Jesus and been united with Jesus. Because Jesus said in John 14, 6, no man comes to the Father but through me. So it took that incredible, powerful event for us to be able to come together in unity with Jesus, come together in unity with our Father, and then have unity with one another. 
If you don't have a right relationship with Jesus Christ, if you don't have a right relationship with God, I promise you, you'll never have a right relationship with any human being. You want to know why so many so many things are failing in people's lives? It's because of a lack of unity. They are not of the same mind. Right. They're not of the same mind. A They're not in agreement. A house divided will fall. And, and it it's says. like, you know, how can two walk together unless they're in agreement? Unless you're of the same mind, well, you're not going to have that power that comes with that unity. Right. It won't be there. How can we pray together? How can we come together? If two, two or more of you agree, we have to be in agreement. That, I mean, that's a, an obvious statement. But it takes that power. When we are truly in agreement, and I believe that in these perilous last days, we are going to see not great church growth, not, not good anyhow, mm. because it's going to be a great apostasy, a greater falling away. And there's going to be churches like the Church of Laodicea that grow and grow and grow and they're boasting and how wonderful they are. And yet they are, Christ is absent. That's what it, in Revelation yes. chapter 3, this church, the Church of Laodicea, they're boasting. They say, we're rich, we have need of nothing. And yet Jesus Christ is outside. He's not even in there. No, I'm talking about a, a true unity of fellowship of believers. And, you know, you can have that unity of fellowship. You don't need a lot of people. Right. You know, Mark said, what, what Jesus said, two or more, uh, two or three of you gathered in my name. There I am in your midst. And that power will be there, that power of, of, of an atomic explosion of fusion mm. will be there. Because nothing is impossible with God. Absolutely. Absolutely nothing is impossible with God. We need that atomic power in our prayers, and that will only come when we are driven. It was that fusion explosion that drove things together. We need to pray that Jesus would drive us together in perfect unity. And I'm going to tell you something. It may not be a pleasant experience in the natural. It wasn't for Jesus. It was not. On a hill, on a road, stood an old the symbol of suffering and shame And I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain 